Howdy, AP Breakout. It's Ms. Kosh. Um, I am looking at... Okay, so when I started looking at the AP curriculum and I started looking at what AP Classroom had as far as the questions that they asked, um, the way that I have historically taught what I think falls under three, this is three, two, and three, three, um, is a little different. So, um, so I put together this practice, and then as a team here at our school, we decided to save the AP style way of doing this until right before we do polar. So I'm going to teach you everything you need to know um, for the AP test, but not yet. I want you really, really, really good at the unit circle and all things kind of a, in a slightly more traditional way of teaching this. I don't know if that's accurate, but I had already put this together thinking I might teach it now, and I thought I'd make the video so I don't have to later. Um, okay. So basically the difference is, is historically when I've taught pre-cal, we have kept a radius of one until, right, until polar. Okay, so we have done everything we wanted to do with a, with a circle with a radius of one. Well, the AP curriculum starts throwing in different size radii. Um, and so, which is great, but I just want my kids so solid at the unit circle that we decided to pause on the rest of this. Um, so anyway, that's our thought. Okay, so on this, this is how I intend to teach this um, when we get there. And that is, okay, say this angle FAE is pi over 3. Okay, so we've got this 60 degree angle, we've got pi over 3. And here, this has got a radius of 1, this has a radius of 2, this is 3, this is 4. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what it is. So we want to know the coordinates. Well, by the time my little darlings get to this um, right before we do polar, they're going to be so good at knowing the coordinates when the radius is 1, they're going to know that this is 1 half root 3 over 2. Okay, so here's the, the radius right here is one. Um, and then when you draw in this triangle, here was the 60 degree angle, here's the 30, this, this radius is one, and they know those coordinates and they're not even gonna have to draw the triangle anymore because they've done this. Well, then what happens is if I extend my, my, if I extend my radius, I have this new triangle um, where, can you see orange? I think you can. Okay, I have this new triangle where now my hypotenuse has grown to two. Well, opposite the 30 is still half of that. Opposite my 60 is, um, is going to be 1 times root 3. So C, okay, hang on, let's write this a little more organized. We just found that B had the coordinates um, 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And then I just said that C, I'll use orange, C is now 1 for the x value. And then we had, so it's 1 root 3, 2. So this is root 3. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, um, and now we're looking at, I was sick yesterday. I don't know if I said that yet in this video. Um, here we're looking at D. Where did that come down? I don't know. Okay, something like this. Well, now we have a hypotenuse of 3. Um, so opposite the 30 is half of that. So in green, this is 3 halves. And then this becomes, well, this value times root 3. So 3 root 3 over 2. And so the coordinates of D are 3 halves comma 3 root 3 over 2. Okay, um, last one, last color. Here comes E. Oh, this is ridiculous. Um, we now have a radius of 4, which means opposite the 30 is now half of that, which is 2. And then this is going to be two, uh, the 2 times root 3. So our point E is the point 2, comma, 2 root 3. So here's the whole idea behind all of this. Here's the point with all these points. Um, I think I'm so funny. Um, Basically, what we were looking at is we took this, these initial values and we multiplied it by the radius. So if I take these and I multiply it by 2, I just get 1 and root 3. And if I take these values and I multiply it by the radius, I get 3 halves time, and then 3 root 3 over 2. Multiply this by 4. Half of 4 is 2. Root 3 over 2 times 4. The 2 and the 4 cancel. It gives me 2 root 3. Um, and so what I wanted to do was kind of show you how how the size, the measure of the angle didn't change for all of these. Their arc length might, their arc length does change, um, and their coordinates change, but the sine value stays constant through this whole time because the angle didn't change, um, which is kind of cool. Okay, so the necessary things. What's happening here when we have, well, like if I look at, I have this triangle. Here's my theta. This is the x value. This is the y value. Here's the radius. Well, what do I know from, from geometry? I know that um, that sine of theta is equal to y over r. So what can you say? We can write the rule that y is equal to r sine theta. Okay, we know cosine of theta 
is equal to um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over r. So x is equal to r cosine theta. Okay, what, how is this different from what we've been doing on the unit circle? Well, in the unit circle, r was just 1. So 1 times sine of theta, we were, we were good to go. Um, so this is just a slight extension from there. I think AP slides it in too soon, but nobody asked me. Um, okay, then what else do we know? Sorry, there's my opinion. Um, I know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared because that's Pythagorean theorem. We've got this lovely right triangle. And so I, if I want to solve for r, it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. And our, our radius tends to be positive no matter. I, when, all of these problems, I always keep my radius positive. So um, there you go. Keep that positive. And then we also know that tangent of theta is going to be equal to y over x. And so what I would write down is that the inverse tangent, oh, sorry, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. But I'm going to put a little star here and remind you, check your quadrant. Okay, so what happens is if you need to use a calculator or if you're not quite sure what's happening, um, you just want to make sure that you give me the angle that's in the appropriate quadrant. Your calculator will not give you angles in quadrant two or three, so you have to be careful. Um, so, yeah, think through that one. Um, this is a six-minute video. You know what? Come back for the next one. All right, go practice. We'll see you.